All right, so last week we were looking at radiating lines in composition and the L composition. This week we're going to be looking at something called steel yard, or it's also called fulcrum, and looking at a cross composition. So a steel yard composition is probably a composition type you have not heard of before. It has to do with balance. Try envisioning a scale in your mind and then placing weights on that scale. So for every object or main mass you have, you have to have something that counterbalances it or otherwise the painting will feel like it's more one-sided. It'll feel off balance. And it's this visual perception thing that occurs um, when you're looking at a work of art that you have to counterbalance it. It doesn't have to be the same size. In fact, it's often best to counterbalance with something smaller. So you have a large object, object up front and a smaller one off into the distance. And you'll see this used again and again um, in master works of art and contemporary pieces too. And like with all compositions, it can be applied not just to landscape, but it, it figures, um, still life, and abstraction. So this piece that we're looking at, at first appears like it's an L composition. In fact, you, it's kind of both. It's got that L part, which is the vertical part of the tree trunk, and then it kind of has the land mass, which is stretching across horizontally. But it's also got that pathway leading off into the distance and that group of trees to the right, the ones that are in the background in the distance right towards the edge of the painting in the middle ground. So those trees act as a counterbalance and so does the path. Now looking at a different painting, this one has a big mass of trees up front and then off in the distance in the middle ground and even in the background, there are some smaller trees to kind of help off balance that heavy mass that's off to the left side. And there we've got the one tree on the right to kind of counterbalance that. If you took away that little tree, it would throw the painting out of balance and there would be visually awkward. All right, so I've shown you these paintings before, at least um, some of the paintings that are in this series. I think some of you may have even chose to do it for that little postcard we were doing, that study in warm and cool colors. This is Monet's Haystacks. And what's great about this is there's two of them and one helps to offset the other. So there, there's that big haystack up front and then a little bit farther back is that little one and it's serving as a counterbalance point. Again, if you took away that small haystack, you can just like put your thumb over it. It weakens the overall design. Getting the picture yet? So for every big mass you have, you counterbalance it with something else. So in this picture, you have the woman holding the child and then off in the distance to kind of counterbalance that mass and to kind of redirect the eye back at her is that figure who's bathing in the ocean. Um, this is also an example of a diagonal composition. So really it's both, it has both elements to it. Here we're looking at another Monet painting again heavy masses to the front when, when you're talking about those big poplar trees counterbalanced by that figure off in the distance. Again, take that figure out and the composition does not feel as well balanced. All right, so now we're going to be looking at the cross composition. The cross is just what it sounds like. It's the shape of a cross. And you can find this in landscape, but you can find it with figurative work, um, and you can find it also with still life. So the cross composition in landscape usually occurs when you have boats, the scene with boats in it. You can see the mast forms a vertical, and the horizon line or the water line can create a horizontal. This can also be formed with trees as well, so it, uh, it can be applied to a tree scene too. Here's another example of how boat masts can serve as the cross. Again, the, the mass itself forms a vertical line. The boat, part of the boat does as well. And then the horizontal line is where the horizon line is, where that sky and water meet. So we're looking at a Turner painting here. His paintings border on abstraction and they were kind of radical at the time, but they've since been embraced as like a really good contemporary artist.
So here's an example of how the cross can be used in portraiture. So it, using that cross uh, position, that pose of from the front, his broad shoulders, exaggeratedly broad shoulders, form a sturdy pose. So this pose looks like you cannot knock this guy down. He looks strong. He looks kind of defiant. He looks like a leader. So that's how the cross can be very effective in portraiture too. Now here is a much more gentler approach to the cross um, in portraiture. And this is a, a picture of a young girl. And the vertical axis goes right down the center line of her body. And then her elbows, where her elbows are bent, forms the other part of the cross. And because her hands are touching, you can really see the arms of the cross that way. You can also use multi-figures when you're talking about uh, the figure and cross. So here's an example of that, where the uh, person in the middle, the cupid, forms the vertical but then you have some other characters that are helping to flush out the arms of the cross. Um, and that's kind of, that cupid is kind of dividing the canvas almost in half, a little bit off center. And then you can see that kind of plus sign there for a very balanced composition. That's one of the things about the cross composition is it's usually very balanced. You can also see the cross used in crucifixion paintings. This is not a crucifixion painting, but it does harken back to like religious paintings. It's actually a Salvador Dali painting. And you can see this is kind of like Mother Mary and the baby. And it's divided up into the cross shape. Your assignment is to do almost exactly what you did the week prior, except for you're applying the steelyard composition and the cross composition. So I'm looking for two drawings here. And um, up on this screen, I've um, put up some examples of some professional work, some professional sketches, just to show you um, a good goal. All of those sketches are using either the steelyard composition or the cross composition. I also posted those because I felt like they were really good examples of shading and how to use value effectively. Now one is done using pen and ink and I think a little bit of watercolors. The others are done using pencil. So you do have choice and some freedom over what medium you want to use. Just know that I'm looking for something in that vein. Try using the rule of thirds. Look for a good reference picture from online or from your own photo references, your own photo library, and have fun. This is the last grouping of compositions that we'll be studying. Woohoo!